Man United to Brentford one. Steph, honestly, how the hell have Man United pulled that off? What What is that? That is what I call a bank robbery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Straight Literally, um, what it, money heist here. Yeah? Yeah, money heist, whatever you want to call it. Narcos? I don't know if it's Narcos. Ocean's Narcos. 11. Ocean's 11. Ocean's 12. Cray, Cray Brother, Ocean's 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, talking, we're talking like full time bank robbery. But then again, like, so we're here. Should we, what do you want to do? Do you want to get into the positives and the negatives? How do you want to talk? How do you want to surmise this game? Um, I think I'd like to start off actually by saying that I was really taken aback by our defence today mm -hmm. because pre match we were all talking and I think we're collectively. Um, worried or concerned about the defence mm -hmm. with starting with Maguire and, and Evans, um, Lindelof and Dallow. And ironically... They weren't to blame. They weren't Lindy to blame. had a little moment. Lindy had a moment and Dallow... Mm, we'll get to Dallow. Dallow. But, but I think that Maguire and Evans actually... I think, I think Maguire played all right today. Maguire played good yeah. today. He did and, play good and, today. And Evans was pinging balls. Evans yeah. looked like... The balls that Evans was pinging... It, it, was, it, it, was, it, it looked Martinez like Trent. -ish. It looked like Trent. No, it's Martinez-ish. Martinez-ish. Yeah, yeah. But we can't was, say, don't say Trent. Okay. It's Martinez-ish in terms of the, the couple yarders. They were nice. They were good yeah. diagonal balls. Yeah. yeah. Then the real issue for me came in the midfield with Casemiro and Bruno. Yeah. And in the forwards with Rashford. I just, I, honestly, I don't know. <sighs> we're trying to carry too many players at the moment. We're carrying too many players. But, but on, on the flip side... I think that I think that um ooh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um I think that I was happy that considering our issues with the midfield and the forwards, mm -hmm. I was happy actually that they got subbed off. Well, not Bruno, but I'm glad that mm -hmm. Rashford and Casemiro got subbed off. Again, Man United, the whole place erupts, the whole place goes crazy. Mm -hmm. Scott McTominay comes on the pitch and we're looking at that. I heard that it was booed by some of the fans. He rescues, he literally saves the day. Talk to me about Scott. He had his haggis today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, ate yeah. that haggis yeah. and, he, and he took two, three shots of whiskey. Yeah. He's good. Like, I say he's good as in like, he's good for now. And I know that sounds like quite derogatory, but what I'm saying to you is like, I don't want to get lost and swept up in the, in the reactionary thought of, oh my God, like, yeah, McTominay is our saviour. Yes, he was today. A hundred percent he was today. And McTominay is my man of the match. Absolutely. For, for obvious reasons. Um, but I think... And it, it goes back to what we, we were all discussing during the game. I think that certain players respond better to being benched than others. Mm. I think that Scott McTominay has responded very well to being benched. Showed amazing character. Yeah, definitely. Passion, which is what he's known for. We all called him like a passion merchant or whatever you want to call it. But, but isn't that something that's been missing from Man United's performances so far? Because we've been making mistakes and there hasn't been any sign of passion and fight in our performances so far. I think before passion comes having your head screwed on, mm -hmm. first of all, like literally having the competency and the mentality, if you want to call it that, um, to keep a cool head, stay level-headed. When, when you go behind in games, mm -hmm. don't concede again, mm -hmm. which is what we normally do. So I was actually quite, again, that's another surprise mm -hmm. for me today is that we didn't concede again straight after we conceded in the first half. I actually thought that the moment after we conceded that goal was probably our best period. Yeah. Like, okay, obviously Scott McTominay scored those goals, but that was our best period in the game where we sustained pressure and we recycled the ball in the, yeah. opposition's, in the opposition's half. And actually that was probably the period of time when we were most careful in possession, I would say, personally. You know what? Talk to me about um, the choice to take off Casemiro. Was you surprised by it? Because I know you, you've argued that he's the only one that's been treated kind of harshly compared to the other players that have made mistakes week in, week out. Yeah. 100%. Um, so, look, I think at halftime, I, I actually anticipated, mm -hmm. knowing the kind of manager that Eric Ten Hag is, I anticipated he would actually take Casemiro off mm -hmm. uh, because we were 1-0 down. And I kind of knew, well, first of all, we didn't have any like defensive-minded players on the bench. But second of all, Eric Ten Hag, he's in a bit of a, in a ruckus at mm -hmm. the moment. So he would have wanted to bring on a more attacking player. Mm. Um, more attacking than Casemiro, um, so I wasn't surprised at that. But well, Casemiro is our top goal scorer. I think it, the the decision was our uh, de decision was different. I think it was a it, like a punishment one. He's done it before with Malassia in the Europa League. Remember Malassia yeah. and um, was it Luke Shaw? That was he. He just punished them. He said, "You man, move." Yeah, but I think that this it, listen. Long may this continue. If Eric Ten Hag's gonna gonna um, 
punish yeah. punish Casemiro for the mistake from the free kick, which led to the goal. I mean, that's yeah. a whole nother story. But if he's going to punish Casemiro for that, yeah, he should be punishing Bruno and Rashford as well. Yeah, he should be. Well, Bruno's getting less and less minutes though. Today he you comes off Rashford? a sorry, Rashford's getting less and less minutes. He comes off today, 60th minute. That's early and not a minute too soon. Yeah. Yeah, some people he didn't. To, he, he, forget him, forget Rashford being subbed off. He needs to be benched. And again, there's a differentiation between like dropped and being on the bench. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rashford, I go, I go back to what I just said about Scott McTominay. Some players respond better to being benched and then they come back on and they just show character and passion. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if we've been mollycoddling Rashford. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you know, he's so fragile and his mentality, oh, no, no, I want to keep playing him. And, and eventually we'll get back to the 30 goals a season Rashford that we saw last season. But we all know, I mean, recency bias, we all know the season before he was shocking as well. Mm -hmm. So if you, sorry, sorry if, you, if you tried keeping Rashford on, yeah. For the six, seven games of this season so far, yep. and it hasn't been going well for him or as well as last season, bench him. Just see what happens. Just bench him for one game. Just one game. See what happens. So let's talk about so Ganacho. Do you think he's ready to like? Because Ganacho was important, pivotal in what he was doing down that left hand side today. Do you reckon it's his time now to say, you know, you get to start some games now? Yes, I do. Um, I think that. I'm just sorry, my mind's working. I'm going back to the press conference in midweek where Ten Hag said, um, give Rashford time. And I said to you guys before, it, it, prior to the, to the kickoff, I said, you know, you, you, Eric Ten Hag talks about giving Rashford time. Give Garnacho time. Mm. What more does Garnacho need to do? And to those of you who, and I agree, he didn't have much of the ball when Garnacho, he didn't have much of the ball when he came on. But we weren't really feeding him. Like, yeah. we weren't recognising the space that was out there. There's one particular pass where Ericsson had all of that space. There was a gaping hole and he was standing there, gone actually, like, waving. Mm -hmm. And he didn't get past to. But eventually, we found him. Mm. Our midfield found him. And look what happened. Let's have a quick conversation about um, Bruno, actually. Because while we've been giving Rashford a lot of the... It's been harsh on Rashford. Bruno's got the armband. And what have you seen from him since he's become the captain? What have I seen? Hmm? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nil. Nothing. Nil. Um, can he? Can Bruno turn it round? Can you see? Can you see Bruno becoming the captain that we've been looking for? Because after you said, if he ain't wearing an armband, who wears it? Well, that's kind of a, like. Can you be more specific? Who wears it in the squad or the team who is fit and available right now? In the squad, where? Well, in the squad, I would probably give it to Varane Martinez. Varane's never here, so forget about them. But you said squad. You, uh, that's why I asked but you. But then Varane's never here. Like Bruno's never there. He's a ghost on the pitch. So Damn. what's the difference? Like, Damn. sorry, but like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to be harsh. Yeah. But it's kind of, you, you're right in asking that question. I think that question needs to be asked. Mm. Um, you know, if, if you were to take the captaincy off Bruno, who would it be? But I think that's not really our main concern right now. Our main concern is getting through this game, which we have. Yeah. We've got the three points and we need to like, I don't know, like reconvene, regroup, recenter re during the international break because we cannot be losing to Sheffield United and then going into the Man City game with that. Oh, I'm sorry, but no. Absolutely. Well, anyway, you're, you're man, McTommy's a man of the match. Come on.